So to be upfront with you, I was coming into this weekend expecting Street Fighter VI to be announced Sunday night. And I was thinking, cool, I'll make a video about that. That'll be fun. I was not expecting this announcement to simply be a 35 second teaser trailer. That was a shocker. That was a surprise. So it is what it is. Capcom made a short video. I'll try to just make a short video. These are my three hot takeaways. Uh, best thing, worst thing, bonus thing. Best thing, Street Fighter VI already feels distinct. We can start with the logo. This is the worst Street Fighter logo ever, hands down. It's never been this bad before. And Street Fighter as a series has some of the best logos going. Look at these. However, they do all kind of have the same vibe, I guess. And so Street Fighter VI's logo, while being the worst, is at least visually distinct. And I think we can say that about the main game as well. This cannot be mistaken for anything Street Fighter has ever done in its past. Basically, a feeling I always have about this kind of thing is that worse, but at least different, is better than the same, but at least good. Really. And this, this is maybe worst, but at least different. It does feel next gen, at least. It's got some next geniness to it. And maybe that makes it feel exciting in a way. This is the Street Fighter we'll be looking at for the next five to eight years. It's not the last Street Fighter. We don't have to look at anything like that. This is the one for our current moment in time. We're living through COVID. Time for scrunching feet. Worst thing, they thought this was enough. If this teaser was just a cute little surprise at the end of the Capcom Cup exhibition weekend, that would have been neat. That would have been a nice little surprise. However, this was the culmination of a countdown clock. When Capcom throws up a countdown clock, it, it's going to generate attention. Y you are at that point asking us for our attention. And so you have to deliver upon that. This obviously isn't it. Here's the general rule of video game announcements. If you don't have much to show, promote low key. If you have a lot to show, promote medium key. Never promote high key. It's not worth it. And so something on the level of Street Fighter VI deserved probably more for its announcement. It should have been eight characters. It should have had pros doing exhibition matches and showing us new moves and new abilities. It should have had Akuma meeting a stranger we've never seen before, and then they kiss. It should have had things that shock you. It's just, if you wanted to stay on top of everyone's minds until the summer of 2022, this won't cut it. Most people are going to forget about this game next week. Bonus thing, scars make Luke likable. I was confused when the final character for Street Fighter V was announced to be this young blonde babe named Luke. Just didn't seem like there was a lot going on with this guy. He doesn't seem likable. He doesn't, there's nothing that seems cool about this character. Now, Street Fighter VI Luke has these intense scars all over his body and face. And he wears them well. Like, if you have a scar in a video game, normally you're a sourpuss about it, like Sagat. But Luke is still confident and smiling all the time. And I feel like he's maybe likable. Good job, Luke. Also, it should be noted, I know, I know this is a controversial graphical style going in a more realistic direction, but at least Luke's hair isn't yellow anymore, right? This might be the, actually the first Street Fighter game, thanks to the RE engine, that has no yellow hair. That's a plus, I think. A lot of people, a lot of people like, if you, if you hand them a box of crayons, and you're going to say, like, draw, draw blonde hair, they're going to pick up a yellow crayon. And that just doesn't make sense. Look, this is the end of the video. This is, I mean, that's the, this is it, man. <laughs> you give me, what do you want me, do you want me to pull this trailer apart for 10 minutes? This, this is it. Uh, delayed input will be back March 4th, which is actually just next week. And I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Just want to make it clear blonde blonde is a beautiful color blonde is a nice color for hair you know what i mean like pick up the blonde crayon i mean i mean and i know i know i know that was crass because not everyone has a blonde crayon if you're buying 16 colors definitely one is not blonde but you get what i was anyway what i was thinking about for the bonus bit 
was um it was about the Capcom fighting collection which uh seems like a really nice package four years after it turns out it's four years ago i thought the beat em up bundle came out like last year it came out 2018 this thing was really cool and now this is really cool it's not every capcom fighting game but for these games that are included it's got pretty much every feature you could possibly ask for but it did in my mind bring up this ancient memory this old feeling that I realized I'll never have anymore, may never have again. And this was that, when I had this arcade uh, in my mall called Aladdin's Castle, and it was actually really small, but it still had this mystique to it, and it's shaped like an L. Imagine a Waluigi L. And the big arcade games are in, you know, the, the front of the L, and then the less popular ones are in the back of the L. Uh, a thing with fighting games in arcades is that anyone at any moment can come in and just stop you from playing. Well, well, no, they'll challenge you. They'll challenge you, they'll beat you, and then you have to go. Your game is over. In Time Crisis, if someone shows up next to you and puts in a quarter, it's the best feeling in the world. You just have a new partner. You're playing Ninja Turtles? Someone is now your brother. Join me in this. We are X-Men together. That's the best feeling. For some reason in fighting games, they can just end you. And so I would go into the back corner. I would, I would avoid the popular games because I would know I would get pushed off of those. And that's where Darkstalkers was. And I remember there's a character in Darkstalkers, a game I've never really played much. Uh, he's a zombie who has a guitar. And I thought that was the coolest thing. However, even sometimes in the back of the L, a teenager would still come and find me and kill me. So I never really, like, enjoyed Darkstalkers. Because even when I'm not being bothered by a teenager, I'm scared a teenager is coming <laughs> to end me, to end my quarter, to end that. So, you know, a l there is a lot to say for the loss of arcades, right? But, like, that is one feeling that I'm happy is gone forever. Um, as a bonus bonus. Now that it's just us, I did want to talk about one, a, a, an opportunity in the script, because I wrote down, when we're talking about reused feet, right, it says, it, uh, we're, we're living through COVID, time for scrunching feet. Um, at that moment, I don't know if you were thinking what I was thinking. I was thinking of Winnie the Pooh singing that song that's like, there's a rumbly in my tumbly, time for something sweet. So... Do you think it would have been funny if, in that moment, I said, Time for scrunching feet. Like, would people have gotten that? Would, they, would that have made... Like, I, I, think, I think it would have been too weird, but at the same time, I feel like sometimes you gotta, like, you gotta shoot your shot. And I feel like I missed that opportunity to be, like, next level weird.